right, it's Nick Akin here on the South China Morning Post. I am with the new one championship heavyweight champ, Arjan Singh Bula. Arjan, that must have a nice ring to it, eh? Uh, beautiful, beautiful. I've been waiting for that and the new <laughs> for a very long time. It's the best feeling in the world. And you've had to wait a couple of weeks to be able to share it with the world because, you know, the fight was recorded a few weeks before it was broadcast. But uh, how happy yeah. are you now to be able to tell everyone, I'm the champ. I'm very happy. It was one of the hardest things to do for me and, and, and there's a few family that I had, you know, uh, shared with. Um, but some families probably have had like, why, you, why don't you tell us? And there's people like that, you know, but you got to draw the line somewhere. But uh, I'm excited now. So is anybody else. The news is out there. We've won and we're happy, we're healthy and we're moving forward. How have the celebrations been then with the family? You had to keep it a little bit low key, I guess. Um, but yeah, what has it been like just uh, finally getting to, to, to success, celebrate all the success you've had now? Absolutely. It's been amazing. I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, uh, obviously with COVID, we have to keep things tight, but that, that intimacy also allows, um, you know, a more meaningful sometimes uh, celebration. So it's been good. Uh, we're having actually, um, well, you know, there's been there's been celebrations from around the world. Um, they've been sending it to us. So a lot of people are, are excited, and we're having a local um, sort of a meet and greet set up with a drive 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 through um, with COVID protocols on the weekend. So I'm excited for that as well. Uh, sorry, which part is it of Canada you're in there? Vancouver. Okay, and um, yeah, what's the situation like in Vancouver with COVID? Uh, I've got a few buddies in Canada who tell me it's. Um, starting to move in the right direction now, but still not where they want it to be. Is that frustrating for you? Um, yes and no. Um, yes, because, um, you know, I do want to do more, but no, because there's a reason this is happening um, and you have to respect that. And everyone needs to, I mean, you look at India, we've got family and friends out there that are devastated right now. So we don't want to go through that. Yeah. I was going to ask you as well, just how, great was it for you to win this title to maybe bring some hope to people back in India who were watching you because the whole card one Dangal was Indian themed and it, it must have given them something in this tough time right absolutely absolutely it was um, you know it's it, this it's a very dire situation on the ground and pretty much everything is closed down so this is one of those opportunities sports brings uh, light uh, and people together and, and excitement and like you said hope so um, it, it has done that. Um, and, you know, just, just uh, I, I hope the people make it out. I hope there's, you know, they, they turn things around here. We've been helping out. We plan on helping out more. So th that's just what it is. And Brandon Vera was very gracious in defeat. Um, he, he's one of the nicest guys in one championship. I think everyone agrees. Uh, did you speak to him after the fight? What, what have you been saying? Uh, not really. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't have too much of a relationship with the guys I fight. Um, I'm not looking to make friends in this business, um, <laughs> but I am respectful and um, we, we exchange a few words. Um, you know, I told him he's been a, a good man for the company and the division. And um, I know he's had a difficult time uh, having a child with his wife and, and they had a kid about a week apart from all, from me and my wife. Just, you know, congratulated him on that. And essentially that was kind of where we left off. Yeah, he said he wants to get the belt back, but um, do you think you're, you've got your eyes on other people, don't you? What, do you? what would it take for Brandon to to regain an, an opportunity at the title? I mean, saying it's one thing, doing it something else. And so yeah. we'll see. Let's see if he want, really wants to and if he puts in the work. Um, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. So um, the truth will be – the truth will set him free. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the name you did call out was Kang G1 from South Korea. He's had a couple of big wins this year. What Have you got any update for us? Is one championship open to booking that fight? Have you spoken to them about it? We have not had that conversation yet. Um, it's something that makes sense to me because there were there was a noise about Amir, uh, Amir Ali Akbari um, and behind the scenes, and he was getting loud uh, over, over social media. Um, and this guy went out there and, and, and punched him out within a round. And he did the same to his uh, teammate uh, a few weeks earlier. So, and he's undefeated. He's young. Um, you know, he, because of that, he stands out to me and he makes sense. The rest of the division hasn't been as active um, and, and they're not doing enough to stand out at the moment. So let's see how things shake out though. 
Yeah, I think you called Amir and and Mehdi Baji Iranian loudmouths. Uh, did, did did they? Brandon was kind of annoyed by the the chat coming from them as well. What did they get under your skin, or did you just kind of ignore them? You, what what were they saying to you? No, you know, I, I never let anyone get to me, but it's just one of those things. Um, they're over there. I'm over here. If if that's the way you do it, um, go for it. But I'm going to call you what, what you are. You should, you're loud mouth and then you both got punched out. Um, you, maybe you should spend some more time in the gym uh, rather than online. That's just my opinion <laughs> of it. Um, that's just what it is. It's nothing personal. It's just an observation at arm's length. Doesn't affect me none. And that's just what it is. Yeah, I think Amir was scheduled to fight Anatoly, Anatoly Malikin, but that fight fell through. Do you, do you think that fight should be rebooked? And um, do you think, what, what does Amir need to do? Does he need to win that fight? Or if Anatoly beats him, would Anatoly be in the mix to face you? I mean, Anatoly's at least fought in the division before. <laughs> um, so if he gets another win, um, he's got some momentum behind him. Um, Amir's 0-1. And so... I would, I would, I would have to say he needs a couple of wins before he gets going here. So, you know, those are my thoughts there. Um, but definitely, they should get rebooked. Both of those guys should. And I think it'll be a great fight. They're both high-level athletes um, that bring um, a high skill set to the cage. So, I'd be, I'd be interested in a fan to see how that shakes out uh, for sure. And I've just seen um, a video posted by one championship from. Mr. Renier de Ritter, the, the champ champ, middleweight champ, light heavyweight champ. He did call out Brandon Vera before you fought Brandon. And now he's confirmed he still wants to come for that heavyweight title. What do you make of his challenge? Yeah, Vera said he wants a rematch. He, this guy's saying that it's, it's one thing saying it's another thing doing it, right? Like you said, he had called out Vera. Um, I'm not Brandon Vera. And so maybe he's a little stuck with that call out. Um, and, he, and he's going to double down and that's okay. But uh, I'm not on La and Song either. This guy hasn't been anybody else. You know, I'm not on La. You're not going to run it, sprint across a cage and get up in my grill and shoot those garbage takedowns. So let, let, let's not get it twisted. Um, and, and beyond that, I think it just makes sense um, if he defends and I defend and we get going a little bit. Like I said, he hasn't fought anybody else. Go defend your titles. Uh, I'm right here. I'm not going anywhere. And uh, if you're still standing after a couple of defenses and I'm still here as well, we can get it on. Yeah, because he took Ongla down at will, but obviously I think you've got that wrestling pedigree, you know, Olympics, Commonwealth Games, gold medalist. Come on, got man. He, he, come on, man. Let's keep it real. I mean, he's a good grappler, but if we're talking takedowns, come on, man. Those, the, the, he's not he's not running across the cage and shooting that shit on me. There's no way. And you'd be confident you'd be better than him on the stand-up because, uh, you know, he's no slouch on the stand-up. He, he's survived some battles with Leandro, Artides, but... Is it a different prospect with you? Absolutely it is. I'll take him out. I'll take out his teammate Musasi and whoever else that he trains with. I'm AKA trained, man. Um, we don't run. We don't hide. We're right here. But uh, don't don't think you're going to get it by running your mouth. Amir didn't get it that way. And I would say the same thing to him. Get to work. I'm right here. I'm not going anywhere and we can get it on. Yeah, he's still got... I think Cameron Abasov wants to come up from welterweight, challenge him, the champ from welterweight. Do you think that's a better matchup? I do, and um, I think there's another one. That, there's that light heavyweight. Um, what's his name? The, the, the Russian, the Eastern European. Um, I think he gives him trouble as well. Um, so I think, you know, he's got a couple of challenges ahead of him, and he needs to fight these guys before he does anything else. And you also, as part of your call-out, you put AEW on notice and <laughs> WWE. What was the what is behind that? Do you genuinely want to go into the professional wrestling business? Um, yeah, can you just shed some light on that? It's happening. It's happening. It's not. It's that that's that was already in the works, and that's me announcing my uh, my next moves. That is happening. Um, I'm picking a fight with these guys. You know, uh, I don't like that all of the wrestling leads us in, and they have all these tough guys uh, on their show. Um, I think uh, you know Jake Hager's the toughest guy there. Bellator. He's supposed to be. Uh, Jericho's muscle, uh, Bellator fighter, all American wrestler. Well, I'm an Olympic wrestler. I'm, I'm, I'm a MMA champ and he, he thinks he's blood and guts. I'm right here. Let's, you know, Coker won't let that happen in the cage. So let's just do it in the squared circle. Um, and same thing with WWE. Um, you know, these guys can all get it. They can all get it. Uh, you can start with Bobby Lashley. That guy wrestled in the NAI. So did I, 
Um, you know, he, he fights Bellator. ATT, I'm AKA. Let's get it on. I have no problem with him either. You had a message from Jinder Mahal, the modern day Maharaja. Would you like to link up with him in WWE? He's just made a big comeback. He's got a little stable going now. Is that something that makes sense? Absolutely. Uh, Indians stick together. So <laughs> if, if it goes WWE's way, um, you know, me and Jinder have trained before in the past. Um, I've already spoken to him, uh, told him my intentions. He's supportive all the way. And um, we just need uh, 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 Vince to, to come to the table. We're sitting here. We're waiting. If it's Vince McMahon, great. If it's Tony Khan, great. And if it's the both of them, you can both bring it. No problem. Do you think AEW makes a little more sense with the TNT thing? You know, one championship on TNT as well as AEW. Maybe that's a little easier to, to negotiate something there. Absolutely. They both make sense. You know, uh, India is a big market for both companies. Um, you know, obviously WWE India is huge. Um, I'm familiar. They do the biggest numbers for the company internationally. Um, and, you know, they have over 20 million people that tuned into your, to their event in the past. Um, and then you got AEW. They're looking to crack that market. They're young. They're winning the demo wars, um, over a million on TNT regularly. So both companies make sense for me. And that's the thing that matters most. Anyone else in AEW other than Jake Hager you're looking at? Uh, I like that guy, man. Uh, you know, I, he really stands out for me. I like uh, the pinnacle. Um, you know, I like the, the young group, the pinnacle, what they're doing there. Um, you know, Sting, just for nostalgia's sake, um, <laughs> he, he's around. Um, I like Taz. I like Taz a lot. Um, I like the FTW belt. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of options out there. And uh, we're sitting at the table and, and we're engaged. And we're going to see how this thing goes. I'm sensing you're a big fan of pro wrestling. Is, is that something that's accurate? 100%. Um, you know, I grew up watching this stuff. And, um, you know, as a kid, you don't know – you don't know what it is that you're seeing. You've seen two guys go at it, bright lights, build stadium. And be that the Olympic Games, be that uh, MMA, be that pro wrestling, it gives me the same feel. So uh, I'm going to tap into it as much as I can. And uh, end of the day, I walk out with that mace. That, waist, uh, that mace is from Hanuman, the god of wrestling. Um, so if I'm wrestling amateur wrestling, if I'm wrestling in MMA, or I'm wrestling in pro wrestling, it doesn't matter. I'm bringing the, I'm bringing the war mace and we're going to war. Yeah, that was another thing, actually. Rene said he was going to take your mace. Um, was that a little disrespectful? I'll smash him over the head with it. There's no way. He <laughs> couldn't even carry it. He couldn't even carry that thing. He, again, intentions is one thing, and taking it from me is completely different, and walking away with it is completely different. Um, there's no way a guy with those garbage takedowns is going to be carrying my mace anytime soon. All right, well, I, I kind of intrigued to see that matchup. Maybe, hopefully, it plays out sometime. But, um, I, yeah, I just had one other question for you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Ritu Fogat lost as well on the one dango card. What did you make of her loss to Binu Wen? A lot of fans have been saying, oh, it was a robbery. A lot of fans saying B1, this and that. Do you, what did you think? Uh, you know, I felt she did enough to win. I did. Um, I know the, the scoring system's unique. Um, compared to other promotions uh, around the world, but I still felt she did enough to win her total body of work. Um, you know, I think uh, I think she's coming along fantastically. I don't think she even knew she was behind, and maybe um, there was some oversight there to to communicate some urgency. Um, mm. But maybe they felt the same as me and, and many other people that that watched it. Um, and it was just a, it was a tight fight, and um, but she's developing and she's got a tremendous amount of potential. I hope. You know, and I know her, um, and I don't know where she comes from. She's tough. She's going to be as focused and determined as ever. This will not break her. If anything, it will uh, make her more laser focused. And um, just, just, just keep putting in the work. Don't get too ahead of yourself. That's my only, my only uh, suggestions to her. Build the base right, and then, and then start flying. Yeah, there's a little uncertainty now whether she's still going to be in this Atomic Grand Prix. Do you, do you think she still deserves it, or maybe she'd be better off? like you say, working on things first? Uh, I'll leave that up to the company, right? They booked her before the Grand Prix with this. Um, obviously, she's a, a huge name. Um, she's a queen of Indian MMA. Um, so there's a lot of upside to that. And um, it, uh, that's up to her team and, and the company to decide where she's at. I will say every time she gets out, she does show another wrinkle in her game. So she's still evolving in game. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take for the Grand Prix to, to, to her, for her to work her way through her back bracket, 
I think that would weigh in on their decision. It would if I was a part of it. Um, but, you know, I, those are my thoughts on her. Well, you are certainly the king of Indian MMA, the first MMA world champion from India. Thank you so much, Arjun Buller, for joining me. Cannot wait to see your next fight. When are we thinking? Later this year or you take a little time off? I, I want to get one in before the end of the year for sure. Um, but like I said, um, we're, we're sitting at the table with Pro Wrestling right now. <laughs> and uh, we're going to let these talks unfold. Um, but make no mistake, I did not enjoy sitting out for over a year. That's the longest layoff I've ever had for competition. Um, I don't even want to wait six months. So uh, I'll be back. I love competing. That's why I'm in this game. All right, man. Thank you so much for talking to me. And uh, yeah, can't wait to see you back in that circle, mate. Thank you so much.